Hello, this is Rose Diamond, and this is the second video in the series introducing my program, Practicing Whole Mind, Whole World. In the first one, I, I spoke briefly about how we're all living in this situation of global stress right now, and that that is growing every day, actually. You know, it's bad enough being human at, at, at any time. You know, we, we're challenged. It's, it's a challenge to, um, to make a living, to have a home, to have a family, to have relationships. All of these present their own challenges. And on top of that, we're living in a global environment where there is definite life-threatening stress happening. And that presses on all of us. And so, as I said, there, you know, there are two ways that we can respond to this. One of them is that we respond, we, have a, we each have a default um, way of expressing our stress. I'm going to go into that in a minute. And the other one is that we can actually use this situation as a wake-up call to activate ourselves into our next stage of consciousness and creativity. But let's have a look now at some of the ways that you may be experiencing stress and the ways that this might, might be expressing in your life. So what I'm saying is that when, we, when we're stressed or when we're in a life-threatening situation, we tend to go into old patterns, old survival patterns, old habits. And these old habits may make us feel safe. We actually created them probably at a very early age. They were creative adaptations to all difficult situations and they worked at the time. But now we're adults, we don't really need them anymore. So we, beca we can become more aware of them. But they're still there. They're still operating us un unconsciously. And what they do is that they prevent us from really living life as fully as, as we might. So the first way that your stress may be manifesting is that you go into overdrive. If this isn't you, I'm sure you know people like this. So in overdrive, you're very busy. You have a, a to-do list as long as your arm. You're very distracted. You, you're full of ideas. You have many creative ideas. You're a very creative person. But you're rushing here, rushing there, being busy, be <laughs> talking to this person, talking to that person. And, you know, sometimes you can actually get things done within, within all, all that busyness. But it does tend to have the effect of, you know, for a lot of people that they start a lot of things, but they never finish anything. Or it can have the fact that you're the effect that you're so distracted that your your relationships start to suffer. For example, you might get um, irritated, impatient. Um, you know, you, you just want to kind of bury your head in your work and keep busy, 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 because that feels the safest place to be. Um, so that's the first that's the first default position: busy, <laughs> distracted fragmented all over the place. The second one is you bury your head in the sand. And of course you can, you know, you might, you might, you might adopt more than one of these positions, but bury your head in the sand. So you're a sensitive, caring person and sometimes just everything feels too much. So you've found ways throughout your life to just numb yourself out a bit to take the edge off. You might do this with alcohol or drugs or watching TV or um, food. These are all kind of common ways that people cope with their anxiety in our society. And as I said, that, you know, that can make you feel safe. You know, you become a bit of a, a lounge lizard or a, a couch potato and, you know, there you are sort of stretched out on the sofa every night with your TV and your glass of wine fine however you probably also feel that there's something missing that there's there's a, just a sort of edge of dissatisfaction in you there's a feeling that there's more and that you don't quite know how to get there you don't know how to get out of this this stuck comfy comfort zone this habit of, of being comfortable into a fully lived life, a life where you feel really alive every day, where you feel engaged, where you are participating. You don't know how to do that, but you know it's there. You know there's another possibility. So that's bury your head in the sand. Along with that, you can also use actually even spiritual development and um, personal development can be a way of burying your head in the sand. 
you know, I know many people who are really deep into their spiritual practices. Oh, you know, everything's going to be fine. Oh, I don't have to worry about what's going on. Well, well, you know, everything may be fine. We don't know. That's the truth. We we actually don't know what's going to happen. But we're all being called at this moment to participate. We all have a we all have a role to play in everything being fine. We can't just sort of lay back on the sofa and turn turn everything over to the universe and say oh, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine when you are fully participating. So the third default position is um, you get stuck in despair and depression. Now this is a really difficult one because. As part of this the process of transition to whole mind, whole world, we do have to go through um, a healing process. You know, we all need, we all have parts of ourselves that need to be healed and made whole. And sometimes this can can require us to to go into a more introverted place where we're just in our sanctuary healing ourselves for quite extended lengths of time. I've certainly been through a process like that. But the difficulty comes when we get stuck in that, when we get stuck in depression, when we get stuck in pessimism. When, whereas the, the, the last person is more likely to say, everything's going to be fine. When you're stuck in despair and, and depression, you're more likely to say, oh, you know, it's hopeless. It's hopeless. We're heading towards apocalypse. You know, what's the point? What can I do? What's the point? You feel disempowered. Uh, you feel hopeless. It's not a good place to be. But it is possible to move out of that. When you're in it, it feels like you're never going to get out of it. You're stuck there. But I, I, I can tell you from personal experience, it is possible to get beyond despair and depression and disempowerment. And the fourth uh, comfort position I want to um, talk about today is um, the, you, the feeling that you're carrying the world on your shoulders. So in this case, you're, um, you're, you're a really caring person. You've probably been the one in your family that was there for everybody else, even as a child, a young child. You may have been taking care of your parents. You've learned to be a good listener. You've learned to sort of look out for everybody and make sure that everybody's okay. You are very effective at what you do. But, you know, this can become a burden. I know this one too because I went through this in my life and I was very, very um, dedicated to my work, the work I'm doing, same work I'm doing now. But now I know how long I have this sense that I'm carrying a burden. Then it was like, oh, I have to do this and nobody else is going to do this and I'm doing it on my, on my own. So what goes along with all of these um, stress positions is a feeling of being isolated, feeling, feeling of being alone. And the new energy, the new consciousness we're moving into is a consciousness of interconnection, co-creation, of knowing that you are part of everything. So, so I would like you to think about your own um, default stress positions. What are your old comfort zone habits that are keeping you stuck, that are keeping you limited? Are you somebody that goes into overdrive? Are you somebody that buries your head in the sand? Do you carry the world on your shoulders or do you have a tendency to get stuck in despair and disempowerment and depression? And there are other, obviously there are other symptoms as well of this transition, but I'll leave you with those just now. I really want you to think about that and start noticing in your daily life when your energy drops, when your spirits drop, when, you're, when you start to feel slightly sort of low, are you going into one of these, these positions? Next time I'm going to, so that's the bad news. Next time I'm going to um, talk about the good news, which is what it actually feels like to experience wholeness. Thanks for listening.